I brought my um, young baby son, Isaac, there at the time. And I just remember, it's neat that you mentioned smiling, because when I was thinking what I was going to say is that that's what helped me originally and initially, um, immediately, I should say. Um, I was just hooked with his smile, and we knew that he was going to be a great treasure in our life. And when I look at my son, Isaac, who's 17, I can see how long that Jim has been a part of our life. And Kathy. I'm Lana Grant from Brooklyn, where Jim was minister for, hi Kathy, <laughs> uh, for almost 10 years, and I had Brooklyn General Store, and Jim used to walk over and get coffee 25 times a day. <laughs> of course, we gave it to him free, so that's probably why he came so often. <laughs> I do have one of his paintings. He gave me when I sold the store of uh, a winter scene of Bluebill Bay, and I cherish it every day. Jim did so much for our community, and um, he welcomed everybody, and he would talk to anybody. He was uh, a terrific minister, and we missed him terribly. <coughs> I'm from Brooklyn, also. And um, I was one of uh, Lorna's employees. So we had the A and A committee. And Calton was president, Jim was vice president. And they said, what's A and A? I said, agitate and aggravate. <laughs> <laughs> because they would come in and torture the work. He uh, spent day after day for years there, and I would go down, and my husband liked to listen to, to some music. It was a long day, and that project took many, many years, and he didn't always, I, I always wondered what Jim was thinking of some of the music he played. It was just country music sometimes, and other music, and he just, he played it throughout, and Jim just continued on doing his work, checking in, whatever was needed. And for years, just listen to whatever Norris wanted to listen to. <laughs> and uh, so we really enjoyed our time with Jim. He was a very loving, caring person. And uh, we miss him. Um, and uh, when we moved back up to Maine in um, the end of 2009, 2010, Zachary was just little. He was a couple years old and um, started school. And anybody who's had a kid go through elementary school knows they play the recorder. <laughs> and you listen as a parent to that recorder. And so I can remember one time I was I was telling Jim how Zachary had learned. What did you learn? Do you remember Zachary? Beethoven. Beethoven, yes. <laughs> and he said, how do you play in church? And I thought, well, because um, <laughs> it's a recorder. Um, but he had him come up and, and play in church, and I have a picture of Beckham playing um, Ode to Joy in church, and Jim standing behind him looking so very proud of him playing the recorder in church, and how uh, he was of the kids and of the music, and uh, it's a great memory and a great picture. <laughs> Dan Washburn and I was blessed to serve with uh, Jim on the American Baptist Church's China Lake Camp Board for quite a number of years. Um, and then I've been blessed to be able to sit next to him with you here for the last two years and just appreciate his sweet spirit, his sweet leadership style, uh, and his friendship that he shared with everybody. I guess probably my husband, who was pastor also, 
probably met Jim more than I did, but, but I had times with Jim, um, and when, when, especially after he moved to the West Bowdoin Church and was part of Bowdoin Camp Association, because he was always active everywhere. I remember the time we went to the church and they were uh, refurbishing or building on or something like that. So it's good. It's good. One more thing. Uh, I, he helped the American Baptist women get their website up running. And we plagued him a lot, I think. <laughs> I was on the children, and he would call them up at the beginning of each service or during the service and give them little pictures with cards with verses on it. And he and they would all come right up and he'd sit with them and spend as much time as he wanted uh, with all of them. Well, you married. <laughs> 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 I always say at a funeral, no one could ever take the memories away. And I gotta say, when Jimmy Caffey was getting ready to retire, it was my prayer that they would come to this church. And I'm here to tell you that God answers prayer. <laughs> Not just in that case, but many cases. And so as we got to know him more, I got to know Jim from going through the Institute of Ministry School. And, uh, oh, by the way, they're looking for a few good men and women at the Institute. We can use more disciples. But, all kidding aside, Jim was a very godly man. If you ever really, really got to know him. But he could be a lot of fun, too. We invite Jim and Kathy up to our camp on the lake. They would have scallops. The dog and I had a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I wanted because I always like to smell the scallops. <laughs> but we had a great time fellowshipping. And a little different. different a couple weeks ago. Kathy came up to camp. But the big blessing was Jim went home to be with the Lord. I'll see him again. And now I got to try to speak. Here <coughs> Bibles if you have it with you, if not just some of the first of your few. First Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 55 to 58. Or on the back of your bulletin. Verse 55, where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen. 
Satan seemed to be victorious in the Garden of Eden and at the cross of Jesus. But God turned Satan's apparent victory into defeat when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Thus, death no longer was a source of dread or fear. Christ overcame it, and one day we too will as the gym. And the longer, excuse me, the law will no longer make sinners out of us who cannot keep it. Death has been defeated, and we have hope beyond the grave. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And how can we say that today? Jim has been taken from this life. He will be missed by his family and friends who know him and love him. How can we thank God when death is something we fight and hate and rebel against? We are sad and full of sorrow when death takes a loved one from us. Well, first we can say, but thanks be to God. Because Jesus has taken the sting out of death. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 54 and 55, where, O oh, death, is a victory. And where, O oh, death, is his sting. One of my visits with Jim, I mean, we'd just be talking normal, and all of a sudden, a big smile would come on his face. I didn't know if I did ask him what he was thinking or not. But <laughs> I said, what's up, Jim? What are you thinking about? And this was out of the blue. He said, you know what? I'm not afraid to die. I'm not afraid to die. I said, you know why he said that? Because Christ has taken the stain of his death. We do not need to be afraid of death. Christ faced, he faced death for us. But thanks be to God. We can say this because death has been swallowed in victory. When you understand this, let me ask, where is Jim now? Jesus says in John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. In other words, Jim is still alive. When he took that last breath here on earth, his next breath all was from heaven. Jesus, you see, is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The Bible says we are to live in, in his body and go out of his body into the presence of the Lord. If you are a believer and are saved and accepted Christ as personal Savior, such a time it gets great strength to pray as Job did, excuse me, Job did in chapter 1, verse 21, which says, The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. And yet we are able to pray this because we know that Jim is with the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God because Jim is with our Lord. Thanks be to God because of the blessings Jim experienced in his life with family and friends and community. He went beyond the church. He didn't speak just in church. He spoke to whoever he could come across. Jim spoke 
quite often about blessings. The many blessings you have through it and had. So it's like him and Kathy both. Notice how Paul ends. gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul tells us it comes down to Jesus. Jim believed in Jesus. He believed in his Savior. So the sting of death has been removed. Jim believed in Jesus, so right now he is at home with his Lord. Not everyone can say that. Because not everyone <coughs> believes. In Jesus. For those people, the awfulness of death is made more awful by the total lack of comfort and hope. I've done a few of those funerals. And I felt so sad, so sad when I learned that I'm doing a funeral of an unsaved person. What they have not got to look forward to. And in one of those funerals, I met with a mom and daughter. And I said, is there something you want me to speak on specifically? And right out in a big blur. We don't want no hell and brimstone spoken in this service. Well, I looked at him and I said, you know what? I plan to speak about Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. And if you don't want that, then you don't want me. So I didn't know what I was getting into. All I knew was God had led me to speak about Jesus Christ in that service. And I gave my testimony and a few other things. And you know, when I said amen, when I was done, 90% of that congregation said amen. So what's that tell you? Lord wanted me to speak about Jesus Christ. But as that person was buried at the graveside, I stood by his grave afterwards and I had this horrible empty feeling. So since Jim has taught me a lot, not just in school, he was also my mentor through school. I always saw Jim witnessing people. I mean, he'd even give the, we'd go to Uncle Mo's diner for coffee and a muffin. And he'd give the waitresses a hard time. <laughs> and, uh, but they knew how to give it back, too. <laughs> but it's all said and done. He didn't hesitate. We didn't hesitate. Bow our heads in prayer prior to partaking of the refreshments we had ordered. See, we didn't care who we were in. And that set a stronger tone for me to not be afraid. To witness to anybody, whether they're bad, good, or indifferent. We're all the same in God's eyes. He cares about each and every one of us. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Actually, it's turning your hymn book, the red hymn book, in number 71, the green hymn book, 308. Shall we stand and we say, say, this is the victory.
we connect his body to us. Knowing that his spirit is with the Lord in his heavenly house. And in so doing, we rest our hearts in fresh confidence on the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to life through Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to its working by which he is able to even to subdue all things to himself. Let us pray. Father, we gather in a solemn place to remember the life and born of death of our loved ones. We do not sorrow as those who have no hope, for our hope is in Jesus Christ. And we ask that you would comfort each family member and friend. May they be comforted by your word and perish from happy memories sustained by the hope of the resurrection for all who place their faith in you. Amen. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you concludes the service. You're all invited downstairs for refreshments. I would like it after I give the prayer. I would like to have everybody stay seated except for the family. You want to get them out of here first. <laughs> but I've been told by powers to be in the back that I take too long getting downstairs so Everybody's waiting for me. They don't dare to eat without me saying a prayer. So <laughs> it kind of makes sense. So I know I'm not going to be down there first. Let us pray. Let us all stand for prayer. <laughs> Father, we're so blessed to be here today. We are so thankful to have a person like Jim teach so many of us. Teach so many of us to love you. Now Jim walked the walk and talked the talk. Now Lord, may we have a time of fellowship as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Eating over a meal. Talking about the good times, the memories. just ask that you bless the food. May it strengthen our bodies and we give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Amen.